Hi all. In this video, let's understand JavaScript ES12 features. So these are the below features we are going to discuss one by one with examples. So let's start with the numeric separator. So coming to the numeric separator. So it's very hard for the humans to read this type of large numbers quickly. So this numeric separator will allow us to add the underscores in between the digits so that it, it helps it makes the digit to read more easily. So now if we have a number like this, we will be confusing that whether it is a billion or 10 billion. So now if you add some underscores in between these numbers, we can read this digit uh, very easily. So internally when JavaScript is uh, uh, parsing this file, it will omit this underscores. So that's the reason if you compare these both numbers with underscore and normal number, we'll be getting it true as a value. So this numeric separator can also be used for the binary numbers like this hexa numbers and the octal numbers as well. So points to be noted while you using this numeric separator are, so you need to have this, if you have underscore at the end, you will be getting a syntax error because it is expecting some value after this underscore. So that's the reason we'll be getting a syntax error or if you use this underscore at the end. If you use underscore at the beginning, so this is considered as a variable because variable names can be given with the underscore. So now if you use this numeric underscore at the beginning, it is considered as a variable as there will be no variable like that. So we'll be getting a reference error like this. So underscore should not be used at the end. You'll be getting syntax error. If you used at the beginning, it is considered as a variable. So numeric separators can't be used at the beginning, but variable name can be declared with the underscore. No problem for that. So and the point when you're using the big integer, this can be noted with the n notation at the end. So if you use underscore before this n, so this is also not a valid numeric separator. So these are the three points to be noted while you are using the numeric separator. So coming to the next logical operator and assignment expression. So usually these are the logical operators. Now, before learning this, we'll just understand this shorthand operator. We have let a is equal to 10, b is equal to 20. So usually if you define a shorthand operator like this, so now it will be considered like this, a is equal to a plus b. So we'll be writing a shorthand key like this and internally it, its meaning is like this, a is equal to a plus b. So the same would be applied for this logical operators from ES12. So we have only logical and or and nullish operators like this, but now we can use this with the assignment operator like this. So let's see this with an example. If you have two variables like this, Okay, if you want to assign variable two value to variable one, when the variable one value is true, then only, then you will be writing a if statement like this. And if variable one, if it consists of a value and it is a truthy value, then you are going inside this and you are assigning variable two to variable one. So this is part of the code you will be writing earlier. So now this, you can use this logical operator with assignment. So this is internally like this. So if the variable A is a truthy value, then only the next value would be assigning to the variable one. Instead of writing this if, or instead of writing this, you can directly write like this. Okay, so coming to the, this works the same for the logical or as well. So if you have two variables like this, and you're, you're checking whether the variable one is a truthy value. Okay, if it consists of undefined, undefined is a false value. So not undefined. It means if it only true, then you are assigning variable two to variable one. Instead of writing this, uh, this type of if statements, you can write like this. So in sense, if the variable one, if it consists of truthy value, okay. If it consists of false value, sorry, if it consists of false value, then this variable two is assigned to variable one. If it consists of truthy value, this variable one would be assigned to variable one. So this, there won't be any meaning here. So instead of, if, if this is any false value, then this variable two would be assigned to variable one. So this is how we can use this logical operator with assignment. So this is same for the nullish operator as well. So you have undefined like this. So nullish means it will check for the null and undefined. So now you are checking if the variable is null or variable is undefined, then you are assigning this variable two to the variable one. So this is what we'll be doing. So instead of doing that directly, you can write like this. 
okay because this now it will check so here it should be one variable one so now if the variable one is null or variable one is undefined so then only this variable two would be assigned to variable one right so this this is about the knowledge operator assignment so instead of writing all these statements you can just simply write this shorthand like this okay hope you understand this so coming to the string replace replace method so earlier we have a replace replace method now we have replace all so in the replace method what, what we are going to do is if a given string so now if you replace this is a search string so now we are going to search for the test in this string and we'll be replacing the test with javascript so that is what this replace will do but this only does for the first match it means it will only replace the test with javascript and the last test will not be replaced so to make sure all the test given string the, all the tests should to be replaced we are going to use a regular expressions like this if you use replace with a regular expression like this it will replace all the test with the javascript so this is fine but using the regular expression is not that much handy and not readable so now that's the reason we have a replace all method so if if you use replace all test and ja this is a search string and this is a replaceable string it will search for the test and if it finds the test it will replace javascript all the tests in the string it will be replaced with the javascript so this is how the replace works the point to be noted here is if you give any regular expression to the replace all so it will work same as a replace so that is the point to be noted so coming to the fourth point like promise any so the name suggest so now we have declared two promises and we are calling this method so in this method we are defining the promises promise dot any and this method will take an array and it it gives the promises in this array we are going to give array of promises so now as the name suggests any of the promise which first results then this promise will return back it will not execute all other promises so that's the reason this is named as any any of the promise in this if it is resolved then this promise would come back and it will be resolved it will be in the resolved state so that's the reason you have passed the two promises promise one promise two and now you're passing those two promises and if any of the one promise is resolved if it gets resolved so then directly it will be in a resolved state and it returns that resolved promise so this happens if there is any error so then it will return an aggregated error aggregated error with an array so it will define what all the error we got for the each promise so this is about promise dot any so if you want to execute any of the promise in the given list so then you can use this any if you want to use execute all the promises then we have promise dot all as well we can try that so coming to the private class method so from the es6 we have we can define the class like this so now but we don't have any private variable uh, private methods or properties if you define anything with the class within the class everything by default is public whether it is a member uh, property or a method that is considered by default as a public so earlier days we are uh, will be using like this like uh, we'll be giving an underscore like this so this is just a notation or an identification for the other developers stating that this is a private method but we are not controlling or uh, uh, avoiding this method to use outside of the class so this is just a notation to other developers but even though we can access this method outside of this class so that's the reason uh, it is nowhere uh, stopping. So in ES12, we have a feature like you need to give this hash like this. So now this is this method is considered as a private method. And now this method can't be accessed outside of the class. So to access this method, so only the internal methods can, internal method of the class can access this private method. So that's the reason if you want to access this method, you're defining one more method and you're calling this method, private method in this method directly this method can't be accessed outside of the class so that's in that way we are trying to create the private methods so if you call this public method this can be directly called you are created a method and an object to this class and with this object if you call this method directly this would be printed but you can't access the private method 
here so in order to access it you are uh, accessing this show method and internally this show method is calling this private method because private method can be accessible only to the internal class methods not outside of the class method so this is how you are going to create your private class methods so these are some of the es 12 features of javascript hope you understand the video thanks for watching please subscribe for more videos